Look at this rather interesting article I found online that was published by Politico on January 5th, 2024. Now, I am going to use this article in tomorrow's video. Tomorrow's video has to do with how I believe, how I am theorizing, that there will be no 2024 presidential election. Or if there is, there will be no president in 2025. This is not about prophecies or predictions. It's all about exploring what news and media are telling us right to our face. Now, remember, this article was created on January 5th, 2024. The title of this article happens to be The Unpredictable But Entirely Possible Events That Could Throw 2024 Into Turmoil. This article mainly focuses on the 2024 presidential election, and they come up with different scenarios that if these scenarios were to come true, there would be no 2024 presidential election. But I want you to look at a section really quick of this article. Now remember, this article was created on January 5th, 2024. This section of this article reads, A passing at a Trump rally. Isn't that rather interesting? Now, I bet if I were a betting man, if you were to explore a lot of these news agencies and the articles they were publishing in the past, I would bet my last dollar that they were conditioning us for what was going to take place on July 13th. They are also playing out a future scenario. So when they mention October 19th in this section of the article, they are talking about October 19th, 2024. So make sure to save that date on your calendar because I think something is going to happen on that date. Remember, there is always an October surprise. This article from Politico continues to say, political violence can be very disruptive and it's usually not planned. Here's one scenario. On October 19th, a fight breaks out at a Trump rally in Tampa, Florida. A group of five white men in their early 50s look like standard rally goers. But as they catch the attention of one of the many TV cameras in the arena, the group pulls out protest signs reading, Trump lies and save democracy now. They had done similar protest actions together for years. Anti-war protest national political conventions, and a few Trump events, part politics, part reunion for longtime friends who had met in college protesting the first Gulf War. Now, I find this to be rather interesting when they talk about a group of white men because we make connections to a group of white men when it comes to causing violence at Trump's rallies. And that group of people we're talking about is Maxwell Yerick and his friends. News and media, for whatever reason, would always put the spotlight on Maxwell Yerick being shown being arrested at certain rallies causing violence. Violent, and in the end, three people were arrested for assaulting police officers. Are you This is Kenan Hooper being taken away in handcuffs moments after police say he kicked two officers after they were pepper sprayed by protesters. While handcuffing Hooper, investigators say Lisa Kyler jumped on an officer's back. This is what they do to patriots. This video shows Maxwell Gurick being taken to jail. Investigators say he tried to fight an officer who had just been pepper sprayed. All three are charged with assaulting police officers and rioting outside of Donald Trump's event at the convention center just after 7.45 last night. Hooper and Yurik are also charged with resisting arrest. It all happened minutes after Trump's speech wrapped up, and all four officers were treated on scene for minor injuries. Now, again, like I said, even though this scenario in this article is different than what happened on July 13th, you can still make some rather interesting connections. But there is still that date of October 19th, Tampa, Florida. But whatever, continuing to read from this article, it says, what happens next is disputed. A couple attending their seventh Trump rally say that the protesters started pushing when people around them chanted insults. Other accounts say the Trump supporters initiated the fighting. However, it happened. One of the five protesters suffered a heart attack. He is rushed to a local hospital, but he passes away a few hours later. News media scramble to cover the event and the public can't look away. A clear narrative proves elusive. Was the protester's end of life simply a random tragedy or a sign of the dangers of an increasingly violent time in American politics? This is really a interesting and questionable article. Now, you also have to read between the lines when it comes to a lot of these news and media because what they are telling you might mean something else. 
somebody else might have this heart attack at this rally and it could really upset this election. Do have, and when I say they, I'm talking about the powers that be, the three letter organizations and so forth, they do have technology, what is known as a heart attack gun. When they fire this on you, there will be no traces that something was fired upon you, you will have a heart attack, and your autopsy will simply say, you had a heart attack, and that was that. Who even knows when this article was even created and published? It does say January 5th, 2024, but this could be a recent article and they just tweaked the date. You never really know. It says January 5th, 2024, but again, you never ever know. Or this just proves our reality is one big script. Every day there's a new script. Continuing to read from the article, it says, Pundits debates over these questions interspersed with interviews with the deceased man's friends, grieving widow, and eloquent angry teenage children dominate the remaining weeks of the campaign. These stories drawn out much of Biden's messages about declining unemployment and legislative victories and distract from Trump's slogans about immigrants and making America great again. Isn't that rather interesting? What happened on July 13th really took away from Biden's thunder. The debate was really the final nail in the coffin but also what happened on July 13th really blocked out any additional messages that Biden was trying to give out. There was no way he could save his campaign after the debate and after what happened on July 13th because now all the focus was on Trump. Now again, read between the lines of this article. They are saying that the violence had broken out at the Trump rally. Someone passed away at Trump's rally but it did not negatively impact Trump, it negatively impacts Biden. But also, one could read it as this way, if something does indeed happen on October 19th, 2024, this could also negatively impact Kamala Harris as well. What if there is a second attempt, but this time, there is proof that the person or people that caused the incident on October 19th were supporters of Kamala Harris, were Democrats. Because with the official narrative they're trying to give us with Thomas Matthew Crooks, they're trying to say he was a Republican, he was a conservative, yet he fired on Donald Trump. Nothing makes sense when it comes to Thomas Matthew Crooks. But this time, during the second attempt, there will be proof that these people were indeed Democrats. Reading from the article, it says, The poignant of the story draws in some Americans who paid little attention to politics, but for close watchers of politics, it was irresistible. Some question why the matter gets so much press when violence against people of color draws a fraction of the coverage. Others call for the suspension of Trump's campaign, which leads to a whole new set of arguments about whether this was just a pretext to push him out of politics once again. One cable network devotes an hour-long program to a panel discussion about whether the Biden administration has done enough to curb political violence. And so this continues until election day. Now, again, you can see this as July 13th, or if you replace Biden with Kamala Harris, you can go ahead and try to see that this could be something that is going to take place on October 19th, because again, there is always that October surprise. So like I said, and I mentioned multiple times in this video, Mark those calendars down for October 19th. Also, mark your calendars down for tomorrow because I will have that nice size video coming out about the election. So I do want to hear from you. Do you think these articles were conditioning us for July 13th? Or do you think something's going to happen on October 19th that will put the election on its head? But in any case, thank you so much for watching. If you like this channel and you want to see more, please subscribe. If you're already subscribed, please like as any engagement does help the channel grow. Once again, thank you so much for your support.